いらっしゃいませ。I'm Joe and this article is going to be me reading, as I said, my article from today over on my Substack. The link can be found in the description. Born in 1892, around the same time that John Ronald Rule Tolkien was born in the Occidental world to an English couple. Yoshikawa Eiji was a man who defied all expectations and surpassed them all. A remarkable figure with a complex history all to himself. He is a remarkable writer with a knack for writing grand epics, a style that is unequaled in modern Japan, and one who is comparable in talent to the great Shikibu Murasaki of the Heian period. Yoshikawa Eiji was born Yoshikawa Hidetsugu, the given name Hidetsugu. Is rather common, and he was to later change it, not at all uncommon in Japan. He was born in Yokohama in Kanagawa Prefecture, with his father being a small business owner. His father's business went bust, and Yoshikawa was forced to drop out of school to help the family. When he was 18, he had, when he was working at the Yokohama docks, a near fatal accident that changed his life so that. He moved to Tokyo and became an apprentice in a gold lacquer workshop. He was at this it was at this time that he became interested in comic haiku. He was to join a poetry society and started writing comic haiku under the pseudonym Kijiro, the lucky guy. Wish I had a poetry society nearby. While the outside world was tearing itself apart in 1914 with the onset of World War I. Yoshikawa had struck upon his first bit of good luck. His story, The Tale of Enoshima, won first prize in a novel writing contest sponsored by the publisher Kodansha, the HarperCollins of sorts of Japan. He joined the newspaper Mayu Shimbun in 1921, and in the following year, in 1922, he was to begin publishing serializations, starting with The Life of Shinran. 1923 was a year of considerable joy to Yoshikawa, who married the lovely Akazawa Yasu. But then horror struck Japan, as the great earthquake of 1923 struck. This near brush with death convinced him to commit everything to writing, clawing his way slowly to the position of number one writer for Kodansha, after going through almost 20 pen names. He at last renamed himself Yoshikawa Awesome. I mean, Eiji. He was to first use his new pen name for the serial novel of Sword Trouble, Woman Trouble, published by Kodansha. Then again for the immensely popular secret record of Naruto. No, not that Naruto. Published by the Osaka Mainichi Shimbun. Yoshikawa became more introspective in the 1930s. As he started having personal problems, and he at last began writing Musashi in 1935, Musashi being his magnum opus. The story was published serially. I didn't know that until I researched this little tidbit for this article. Musashi was immensely popular and a fantastically written story, one that inspired the great manga Vagabondo, which we're doing podcasts for, of for Rai. Radio Nippon. So do give those a listen. But as to Yoshikawa, he was to divorce his wife in 1937 so that it wasn't all roses and daisies. But then he married rather speedily Ikedo, no, it'd be Ikedo Fumiko. And in the year 1938, Yoshikawa joined the Pen Butai. It means Pen Corps. A government organization which consisted of writers who traveled to the front during the Second Sino Japanese War to write favorably of Japan's war efforts in China. Not that the Japanese people back home were all that gullible. Most were cynical towards this war and felt an unsure of things. But what is funny is that rather than becoming contemptuous of the enemy or worn down, as propaganda is supposed to do, Yoshikawa actually came to appreciate Chinese culture and came to respect it all the more. 
he was to write his second great magnum opus, Tycho, or is it his third or fourth? Dude had so many it is hard to keep track of about Toyotomi Hideyoshi. I've read passages and love what I've read, but hope to move to Japan also to grab an English or French copy out there. And he also wrote a monumental novel of his own, which was a kind of new updated version of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which I just found out about and must grab a copy of soon. I love the original story of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. At the end of the war, he quit writing for a time as he wanted to enjoy his retirement in Yoshino, present-day Omeshi, on the outskirts of Tokyo. But by 1947, he was once again bitten by the writing bug, a tenacious thing. With his newest book, yet another historic fiction epic, this one being The New Tale of the Heike, published by the Asahi Weekly in 1950. He also wrote a book called A Private Record of the Pacific War in 1958. Sadly, he passed away in 1962 to cancer on September 7th. The man had been born something of a pauper and had turned himself into the king of Japanese historic lit, being to Japan what Nigel Tranter was to Scotland, a man that one should deeply respect for his additions to literature as he wrote finer, more sensitive, more beautiful, and ever more evocative fiction than almost any other writer of his time. Only Howard and Tolkien, in my view, are his equals in that era. With Yoshikawa Eiji's work standing the test of time, so that even his translated works are moving to the point of being utterly unique. He transmitted to a new generation the legend of Musashi. The tales of Hideyoshi rescued the reputation from the mire, that of Kiyomori, and was a man who reshaped Japanese literature as a whole. In a lot of ways, my own work of Aganyu pales in comparison to his Musashi volume and is me essentially sh chasing his shadow and seeking to write a story like his. Not beat for beat, but with one or two ideas taken from it and remolded. But where my tale will see Aganyu hunting for his lady love as a man driven by passion and love for his wife, Musashi in the novel is a man chasing a dream, that of perfection and enlightenment. Arguably, only Yoshikawa could have written that novel. And I really do hope that there are plenty of more Yoshikawa Eijis in Japan's future, as his work changed my life and continued to shape my perception, continues to shape, shape my perception of the world and literature. Now, if you enjoyed this video and this essay, don't forget to smash that like and that subscribe button here and to go check out my Substack and follow that and share that and subscribe over there.